If you have a manual tire changer, you know how bad these are on aluminum and chrome rims. You'll be, it's like getting curb bashed just by changing the tire. Keep watching and I'll show you how I built this. It mounts and dismounts on aluminum or chrome or even steel rims without scratching any of them effortlessly. So this is the type of bar that comes stock with a manual tire changer. This end right here is pretty useless unless it's a really soft gushy tire and you can almost just push it on by hand. I use this end for everything and this has installed a lot of tires. But you can see I've put dents and stuff in it because I some of these tires I do for... Uh, my motorhome and stuff like that or some of these huge uh, four-wheel drive tires, off-roading tires are stiff, stiff, stiff. And they will, you just give it a good workout. And I've bent this and tried to hammer it back. Still works, but scratches up. So what I'm going to start out with is this, which is just a piece of, uh, what is this, one-inch plumbing pipe. You see it's still got the threads on the, threads on the end black pipe. And then this is just actually a trampoline pole. Um... That I'm actually going to beef this up. This would probably be suffice by itself, but I'm going to slide this over and weld up the ends and just beef up the middle a little bit, just give it a little bit more strength. We're using the Evo 380. So I was left with this, I cut that little piece off, and now I'm down to this. Rounded the edges just a little bit, but this is going to go on the rim, and the tire is going to run on the top. Pole's going to be hooked to it, and it goes around. So the bead of the tire needs something to roll on, and I'm going to use these bearings. These are 99502s. They're very, very common for front axles, for lawn tractors and stuff like that, and go-karts. Usually they have a little C-clip channel on them that you just you can just pop out the C-clip. But they're cheap and they're abundant. They come with a 5 8 inch hole, so a, a 5 8 inch bolt with a shoulder. They're snug, snug, and that's what we're going to use to mount these to here. So I'm going to stack two, so that'll get me tall enough. And then on the underside, down here, I've made some HDPE plastic. I've actually melted a melt jug. And that will go in here. It's a little off, but we'll mold that in here. And so this will ride on the rim and not scratch. This will ride on top. The tire will roll past these bearings so it doesn't rip the bead and roll up. And I've rounded the edges of this piece of steel on both sides so that the tire can actually roll down off there nice and smooth. This right here has been one of my favorite things I've ever gotten for my drill press. And I have cranks both ways. I actually got it from an auction. But if I lost it or something else, I would buy one in a heartbeat. But I'm able to clamp my workpiece in pretty much anywhere. And I actually just got this, this clamp down to the, uh, the base. But then I can dial in wherever I want my hole. Fine tune it. And that'll just fit down in there. And I'll weld it from below. I've got that all welded on and just ground flat. Um, ideally, I'd want to weld on here, this side too, but I don't want to protrude into the bearing area so I welded I chamfered it and welded as deep as I could which should be good and then this one bearing two bearings 
and then we can put on probably we actually don't even need a, a washer where we put this nut so I heated this plastic up some more and then sandwiched it in between another piece of steel and just vice gripped it and as it oozed out I just kind of molded it around and you don't have to do this I don't need to do it over here and this plastic this is milk jug but that's HDPE and that's the same thing you would find in a five gallon bucket is also HDPE so you could just cut up a five gallon bucket five gallon bucket just wasn't quite thick enough I wanted something a little bit thicker um, I'm just shy of a quarter inch um, I would say that a five gallon bucket's almost an eighth but just shy of an eighth so if you doubled it over itself, it should work just fine as well. But now I need to mount this. I need to use some countersunk screws to actually mount into the surface. I want to keep them back as far as possible because the rim is going to ride in this area, maybe out a half inch. I'm going to put them behind the bearing surface. So I've mounted, I've drawn a line where my bearing is. I'm going to bring these screws up from the bottom, say right about here and here, and countersink them as deep as I can so they don't scratch the rim. So now I will just drill through both pieces through the top and just make a spot for these and then tap it and put it all together. So we just welded it on. I trimmed the bolt to an uh, adequate length. And I used my technique that I show in my bolt cutting video. So you can actually, so they, the nut threads back on. If you just chop them off and then try to thread a nut on, you fight them. So that's all set up. And now I can take my piece, put that on, put the screws back in, and this side is done. And now for the dismount side. Similar to this, a lot easier. There's actually a company called Nomar that makes these. These are for motorcycles, but a lot they actually make, uh, for motorcycle tire changing machine, they actually make these tips right here. And I bought these on Amazon. They're made here in the USA. I bought this pair for under 20 bucks, so they're anywhere from 8 to 10 bucks a pop, which is a great deal. It saves me a lot of hassle. Inside, they actually have, it looks like a stainless steel bar that they've machined down or something, and that slides in the inside, and then they give you a hole. And so the pipe that I used is actually the right diameter for this. So I can pound this in, and this is your dismount. I can pound this in and then run a, um, a roll pin through it all, and it'll hold in place. And having that metal rod in there keeps this from busting off. So I put a hole in here. I actually didn't have a roll pin the right size. So I just tapped. One side's loose, and the other side's tapped with thread so I'll use this bolt but I'm not sure if the bolt's gonna get in the way of dismounting and mounting so we'll just line that up best we can that's a snug fit I don't even know if I that's a really snug fit I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that out Generally, the first side of any tire you're able just to peel on. It's the second side to get you. Let's try this out. Actually, start it back here where you guys can see. Get down to that valley. There we go. What about off? So, try this out. There we go. 
scratching. In the description of the video, I'll put part numbers and, and links to what all these are and dimensions and stuff. So if you wanted to build one yourself, you easily could. But thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to go watch the video on the manual tire machine, the machine I used out there. And the couple little upgrades I did on that to make that an awesome machine. But thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. See you guys soon. Bye.